All right, Jim Bergman with Measure Quick. So you're here to test your air conditioning system, and I and uh, I want to talk about something that's really important. We always call it appliance fixation, and that is, you know, you you're here to service the air conditioner, but you forget about the other things that are at this house, specifically combustion appliances that you should be testing, uh, absolutely year round. Over here we have a gas furnace. Um, that's probably not going to run again until uh, until this fall. But up top there, uh, we've got a hot water tank, and you can see uh, that uh, there's some rust around that, indicating that water's been running down the uh, outside of the flue pipe. So it's been doing some condensing. It's uh, likely an orphan the water heater. But we should be testing that water heater and make sure that it's venting properly to the outside, because the hot water heater can cause CO uh, in the house year round. And now we got the house closed up because we're running air conditioning. We're running likely a higher fan than we are on heating and that could cause depressurization of the combustion air zone and spillage of the hot water tank. So if you own a combustion analyzer, um, we brought out the, uh, the Sauerman analyzer here, a couple of things you need to know. These, these cells are going bad whether you're using it or not, right? The combustion analyzers, uh, the, the cells are chemical cells and they go bad over time. And so if you're not using this tool year round, you're literally just wasting the value that you, that you, bought, that you bought it for. And so uh, Sovereign's really nice because they do have cells that tell you when they're going to when they're going to fail. They give you a little bit of notice. It's a really nice feature of the Sovereign analyzer. But what's a, even a better feature of this analyzer is it's a moneymaker for your company. And so there's combustion appliances. When we're doing the cooling test, number one, we should be walking and doing an ambient CO test to make sure there's no CO in the home. Doing a visual inspection of the hot water tank to make sure that there's no evidence of spillage on the hot water tank. And then doing a combustion test on some of those combustion appliances that are going to be operating during this time of year. Specifically, uh, I would be doing a test on the hot water tank. And if there's a stove or an oven there, we might test the stove or oven also to make sure that it's not a, uh, producing any CO at home. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to turn the analyzer on out here, uh, let it acclimate to fresh air. And then uh, when we go inside, we're going to do a little combustion test of the ambient air and make sure there's no ambient CO in the home. All right. So... Coming in and testing things in the house, just a couple things you want to look for is, you know, the other gas appliances. This is obviously an electric stove in here, so it's not going to be a source of any pollutants in the home, uh, like carbon monoxide. So, but if this was a, a gas stove, what we do is turn it on. You typically want to let these run for about 10 minutes so they have a chance to warm up and stabilize. And then near the top of the oven right here where the heat comes out is where we put our probe down in. And we always want to measure what's called an undiluted flue gas sample. So we want to make sure that we're not measuring in the ambient air. We don't want the, the uh, carbon monoxide to become diluted. And we measure it's what's called CO air free. An appliance like this should not put out above 400 parts per million CO air free. Uh, ovens are not designed to heat your home. So they're just on a short amount of time. So they can emit a small amount of CO while they're operating. But again, we don't want to have that go over 400 ppm CO air free uh, while it's operating in your house. All right, so we're down here at the hot water tank. Uh, Val happens to put some laundry in already, so it's it's already running here. The stack's good and warm here. Just a lot of times I'll grab something, just fill up the stack's warm, indicating we've got uh, flue gas going to the stack. But I want to come over here and take a look at this because this is evidence that there's probably been spillage in the past. Now this could have been done during installation when they were sweating this joint on here, but right now we don't know. And we're gonna we're gonna actually gonna do some testing to make sure this appliance is drafting properly. Now, hot water tanks and things like that are gonna have, this is really a, one of the worst case times of the year because it's, it's warmer outside. And the warmer it gets outside, the less draft that we have. So what I'm gonna be doing to test this real quick is I'm gonna be using a, a Regan smoke pencil. Um, these are available at True Tech Tools. And this is just a, a device. It's basically a smoke pen. It's got a small wick in it. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down here. And it's got a wick in it that we just light on fire. It's sort of like a candle. So you get about a quarter to three eighths of an inch of wick out here. And we'll just go ahead and light this up. And we'll let it burn for just a second. And what it's gonna do here is once it gets warm, there we go. Let it burn for just a minute and blow it out. And what you're going to see here is this is going to generate a small amount of smoke. We're going to go all the way around this draft hood and we're going to make sure that that smoke pulls in from about an inch away. So you can see all the way around this that that smoke is pulling in. We'll get it where you can see it here. And so we have really good draft going up that chimney. 
And this might have drafted back at one point uh, before we replaced the, uh, the uh, ductwork in here, um, she had an open return in her house. Open return meaning open filter slot. And that open filter slot was creating a negative pressure. We're actually in a combustion air zone. To put this out, all you do is put the cap on it and it uh, drives out air and, and it goes out. So now we've done a visual inspection. We made sure that we have draft. Some guys too will use a lighter here, and I'll just show you on a lighter here. You can see that it's also pulling it towards the uh, up into the draft hood. Okay. Now the the draft hood is designed actually to separate the appliance from the draft. So if you think about what's going on here, this up in here is the undiluted flue gas going down in. That's at a positive pressure. It's actually lifting, pushing up the hot water tank, and it goes into this area here where the appliance is separated from the draft, and then this is actually negative in the flue pipe because uh, it's creating a suction up. So we don't want that flue gas pulled out of the hot water tank. It rises naturally, it's naturally buoyant, and it goes from the high pressure zone into the low pressure zone. And the reason that for the draft hood is to prevent a fire. If we we're to block this chimney off, it's better to have flue gas spill into the house than it is, is to have fire coming out the front of the hot water tank looking for, uh, looking for oxygen. Now down here, we also want to take a look down here and make sure there's no evidence of spillage or of, uh, of you know, staining from fire or anything up here. So this is all clean. So this is a pretty good indicator. So now we're just going to do a combustion test on this hot water tank and make sure that it's operating safely. So the Sonoran Analyzer is pretty slick. And what they did with this NCI kit is they actually uh, separated the draft measurement from the stack uh, gas measurement. So what I've did is I disconnected my... Uh, my draft measurement here that's in the probe stack, and I have it connected here with a, an accessory piece. It's just a plug here. If you want to shorten up this hose and connect it, you can. This is plugged off, so now this becomes our draft measurement. When you drill your hole here, you want to be 12 to 18 inches above the draft hood. You do not want to be down near the draft hood to get measured, measured draft. We measure draft in the flue pipe. We do combustion testing of undiluted flue gas inside the tank itself. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna screw this in here. And uh, you want to screw the cone in so you don't get any air going around your draft gauge. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide this in, touch the back wall of the flue pipe, pull it out about halfway, and lock this in. So now I've got a draft measurement here. If I scroll up here, let's see here, we'll turn on the pump so I can get some movement. You can see I've got about negative 0.05, which want to be between negative 0.02 and negative 0.04 on the draft. So I'm going to start the pump up here. And now we're going to watch here because we do have draft. So we got our draft and we got our CO and we got our CO air free. So you can see those are both at zero right now and we're at 20.9% oxygen. Now this is an accessory um, probe that you can use. It's great for hot water tanks. It's a flexible probe, so you bend it the way you want it. And so what I'm going to do is slide it into the hot water tank and then down into the flue gas so I can get an undiluted flue gas measurement. So when we go in here, we're just going to slide it up underneath. And then I'm going to turn it down, and there's a little turbulator in there. And that's going to put the probe shaft down inside the hot water tank so we get an undiluted flue gas measurement. Now, if, if you get over here, you can see our O2 starting to drop down, and it'll, it'll come down here in a second here. Our O2 will stop, start to drop, and if we have any CO, that'll start to come up. You can see our temperature of our stack temperature around 360. Hot water tanks can run between 300 and 50 and 500 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So this is coming up. We expect it to be in the 450 degree range, most likely. O2 down to 9%. And you can see we have no CO so far on here. So let's just talk about this for just a minute. Why would we have no CO? Well, a hot water tank uh, is actually can burn extremely well. And these analyzers, the sour analyzers have an additional feature which is called a NOx filter. NOx is a cross interference for CO. So a lot of times if you're using like an older back rack analyzer, they weren't equipped with NOx. Uh, more of the more modern analyzers, back rack, Testo, Sourman, all of them have a NOx filter in there. And what that NOx filter is going to do is it's going to remove the cross interferon for the CO. So you're going to get a true CO reading. So you can read zero like we're reading here, zero CO, zero A free, air free. That is completely normal on here. And we'll let this run until our O2 starts to stabilize. You can see we're down to about 9% O2. It's still dropping a little bit here. But we can see 9.6, 9.7, 9.9. So the O2 is now stabilized. Our CO is zero, our CO air free zero. Let's go double check our draft now. Our draft is still at negative 0 0.052. That's good. Our stack temperature is in the, in the 450 degree, actually temperature of flues 
uh, 514, so that's okay on here. We're gonna move this over now. There's two sides of a tank. When a tank comes up, there's what's called the turbulator. It sort of spins the flue gases around to get the maximum contact and slow them down as they come to the tank. The, the tank, actually the flue gases are a positive pressure coming out the tank. So if we were to block this flue off, we'd get what's called spillage, which we showed you here. This is earlier where that spillage uh, likely occurred. And we're gonna move that over here now to the opposite side. So I'll just spin this around, get it out. And now I'm gonna go to the far side of the, of the turbulator and drop it back down in. We wanna test on both sides of the turbulator because the burner could be cocked. You know, the reason that a lot of hot water tanks have problems is because they're installed by homeowners. So the gas valve gets racked, something gets twisted on it. The flue pipe's not quite done right. It's not drafting right. That's why it's so important to test these on every single installation. This one's running really good right now. So I think we're in a good shape here, but I just want to drive home the point that when you're here to service that air conditioner, don't forget there's a combustion appliance. You're standing right next to in that basement. Take a look at it. Look for evidence of spillage. Look for evidence of grommets melting like this one has on here. Look for evidence that there's something under duress because we're in a, we're in a combustion air zone right here. This combustion appliance runs year round. In Valerie's case, we know we fixed some leaks in here, return air leaks in her combustion air zone when we redid her filtering on her furnace. And that was causing a depressurization of the CAS and causing spillage of her hot water heater. So, you know, think about it. A lot of times in cooling, we're running higher airflow than heating. That's going to cause worse problems with a combustion air zone. And to top that off, we have less draft because we have a warmer temperature outside. So we're putting this hot water tank in a worst case condition in the summertime, and it can produce massive amounts of CO that can cause low level CO poisoning for the occupants or even uh, up to death. We have seen more incidences with hot water tanks over the years than we have with furnaces. And so it's really important you don't get that furnace fixation or air conditioner fixation and just focus on the appliance you came down here for because we have an obligation to make sure our consumers are safe and the homes are safe. It's just good practice. And again, that analyzer is it's it's the cells are going bad whether you use them or not. So you better get your best dollar out of it year round. And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the bottom of the video. Again, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.